Hello guys and welcome back to another video of me that Indian guy. I know it has been a long time since I've made my last YouTube video. In fact, if I look at it, my last video was over a year ago. I haven't really made that many videos in the past few years. As you can see, a lot has changed including this room, this setup I'm in. Maybe in a future video, I can show you guys around the house I live in right now. But for today, I want to announce a new series where I go and look at some of my really, really old videos and react to them. And in fact, if I look at it, some of my videos are like six, seven years old. So it has been a while since I made them. The video we're going to go look at today is titled First Week Impressions of the US. It's going to be a really cool experience to go watch this video. It's only three minutes long. Check it out and see what still stands true from that first impression I had of the US and Dallas and Texas in particular. Hello guys and welcome to the first ever video of that Indian guy from America. So today I officially finished. Okay, right off the bat, I used to speak really, really fast back in the days. The OG viewers know this. In fact, if you go back even a year before this, especially the videos I used to make when I was still back home, and not moved here yet. I used to speak even faster than this, so I think this was on the progress of like slowing down and being a little bit more articulate. That's just some things you learn as you start making YouTube videos. Honestly, just hear yourself on a video again and see how you're speaking. So and this is my first week in the United States, and there are many things okay. that I've learned in the first week that I want to share with you guys. Even before we jump into the meat of the video, I probably assume that there were some things that are still going to hold true six years later, but then there are definitely going to be some things that I feel like my view has changed on them after so many years. So the first thing that I noticed, even before landing right from the airplane, was that how things are planned and organized over here. Everything follows a greater structure. Because of this, the roads are almost straight and it's very easy to navigate them. And there's hardly any traffic over here. Okay, this one is definitely true. See, most of America is very suburban, very planned out, organized, like streets intersect correctly. I would say except a few really, really old cities like Boston, some parts of New York, DC, like most of the New York cities are like very well organized. But I will say this, sometimes it just gets really boring. <laughs> I call it a lack of character in the city. That has really hit me at times living in Dallas, which I think is a good representation of suburban America. Contrary to popular beliefs, most of America is not the tall buildings of downtown and not the crazy high rises of Chicago and New York. Most of America is houses, gridded systems, suburbia as they like to call it. It misses out on the character and the chaos that you find when things are not perfectly aligned but I would say 90% of the time I actually like it because there's less traffic things are more organized I would say you can drop me in any part of America at this point and I could navigate my way around the city find where the highways is like everything is so standardized and easy to follow that brings us to our second point that is a car culture almost everyone here owns a car the exception being like if you're in New York City but a house of four people here would have four cars but like even after that there is parking everywhere. I think this was one of the biggest point of culture shock for me when coming to Dallas, especially like really, really heavy car culture, almost no reliable public transport system. And the thing I just said in the video is so true. Right now I live in a house with four other people and we actually have five cars in the house. There's just really no other way to get around the city. The entire city is built around cars. It is what it is. I know a lot of people actually have a second car or a summer car or a convertible. Really the biggest point I can make here is I think I've lived about two and a half years in Dallas without a car and rest of it with a car and the same city feels completely different with the car and without a car. I'm not kidding the time I got my first car here the entire city changed. I would strongly emphasize if you're a new student and if you're not moving to your New York, DC, Chicago, those big cities I would highly consider like having a budget to go buy a car. You don't need to buy a new car you can buy a two thousand three thousand dollar used car but that will make a huge difference in your quality of life here. Saying that let me tell you also one thing that the public transport here is really awful and it's pathetic and i think this is like all over the u.s except a few handful of cities like new york la or chicago we just talked about it really i think public transportation is just not a reliable way to get around maybe it will get you to downtown or like these major areas where people work and there's a lot of offices and so on but beyond that it's really not reliable i would say in most cities just you absolutely need a car. No matter where you live, your quality of life will be significantly downgraded if you don't own a car. Uh, I mean, I have to wait here like anywhere between 20 minutes to one hour for a bus. And even the frequency of trains here in Dallas, unlike Mumbai, is like one every 20 minutes. It sucks, especially for a person like me who is brought up in city like Mumbai where there's an expensive public transport system. Guys, yes, I'm telling you, this was absolutely the biggest culture shock was the car culture. Growing up in Mumbai, there's trains, buses taxis this that just like and just 
constant chaos noise people yes it took a lot of time but there were like dozens of options when it came to how do you get from point a to point b you could get anywhere anytime you want without even ever having to step in a car now my family did own a car in mumbai but we rarely ever drove it because there's so much traffic you just preferred to ride the train the metro the bus or something else because it's just easier so this fact about Dallas and suburban America. It took me, I would say, a solid two years to accept. The first thing that immediately strikes you is that there is no manual labor over here. You have to do everything on your own. If you guys follow me on my vlogs, you might have seen that I do my own dishes, laundry, cleaning the room for the first time. Even at gas station, you are supposed to get out of your car, fill it up. No one is going to help you do that. Last year, the department just sold like Walmart. Although there's staff, people just check out your grocery on your own. Before anybody goes in the comments section, starts typing, you're so entitled and whatnot. If you grow up in India, especially if you grow up in middle class and things like that, it's just very common that you have a maid who comes, washes the dishes, cleans your house and everything. No matter where you go, there's a lot of help available. So you just don't have to do a lot of things. You want to get your clothes pressed, there's a guy whose job is they press your clothes. You want to get this done, there's always somebody willing to do that for you. And that was just very common growing up in Mumbai. Then coming over here where I would say honestly, even though I've made some old videos about things you should learn, I just feel like there was not enough time for me to learn and understand what, what it's going to look like to do all these things on my own. It's not the end of the world. When you move here, you're eventually going to learn these skills. You're going to pick them up. But I think it was just a little bit shocking. I was just so far in the video, everything is true. I mean, it still sometimes bothers me from time to time. Like, ah, I have to do this thing. But it's a reality of living in America where labor is so specialized. Unless you're ultra, ultra, ultra rich, you have to do those things on your own. You are like very much independent and self-reliant over here. Also doing these jobs over here has made me realize the value of manual labor services that i was getting in india i can already feel many changes inside me just within one week i don't know about the amount of changes i faced in one week that might just be a thing to say in a youtube video definitely say like after six seven years you do feel that i think if i look back at my own family back home if we were to divide all the chores amongst ourselves i think we might be able to get away and do everything on our own but the fact is that labor is available for so cheap that you're just not likely to wash dishes and mop the floor and just not you're just not gonna do it because it's just so readily available it gives somebody else a job to do those things for you and it just overall gives you more time to do other things lastly the people are very friendly here i mean i cannot say about the entire us but i can at least say about texas that the people are very friendly you would know the number of new people i'm meeting every day if you are following me on snapchat I mean, here, I just walk up to people and say hi, and they're so welcoming. Okay, I will say that people are definitely extremely friendly, especially in the South. You go to Texas, Florida, Georgia, a lot of those places, I think it's just kind of in the culture. They maybe not as friendly as I'm describing, like you just go up to a stranger and talk. I think that might have been like the enthusiasm of somebody who just moved here or somebody's new. I don't know if I do that regularly anymore or how I would feel to do that right now, especially with COVID and everything else that just happened. But I would say the other parts of the country as well, people are generally very welcoming. So I say that definitely stands true. Maybe the extent of which I'm describing things might honestly vary based on the place you're in, the city you're in, what you're doing at that point. So maybe not like you just go up to anybody and start talking to them at any time. I probably think that's genuinely just the enthusiasm of Kind of being in a new place to speak you know the feeling when you move to a new city you start a new job you're just excited to want to talk to everybody i think that's more so of that but in general especially in the south if you want that hospitality you want their friendliness that's definitely there make the most out of this opportunity to make like new friends as much as possible don't be afraid to ask people for help over here no one is going to say no to help you out okay so this is a really important point over here i think it's just glance over it but the thing about asking people for help You'll notice here when you go to stores, when you go to a lot of places, not every time somebody's going to come up to you and say, can I help you with something? They might be doing their own stuff. You might be in a place where you can't find your way around. People might not always necessarily come up to you and say, can I help you with something? But if you go and ask somebody for help, people are more than willing to help you get around. Even so many years later, I will learn some new things about sports or something else about some shop or something else. I just have no idea. And I just ask people and they're always more than willing to explain it to you. It's more so on you to ask them for help. People are not going to just come up to you all the time. Sometimes they'll, but not all the time, like they'll come up to you and ask if you need something for help. The culture is very independent, so you're trying to do your own thing. But I'm just saying, if you do raise your hand, ask for help, there will be people always willing to help you out. I mean, the people I've met so far have been so welcoming. So these, my friends, were my initial first week impressions of the U.S. 
for all of you who are also recently moved to the US or are already in the US, use the comment section below and let everyone know. I think I shot this video in like January 2016 and many years later, I think more or less these things still stand true. I'm happy that my first week impression of the US many years ago was still about the same as it is today, which is really cool to just look back at it and do that. So I hope you guys enjoyed this kind of new format of video that I'm exploring, this new series that I want to get started. I have so many really cool videos. I think it's going to be a fun experiment to go look back at some of those videos. There's literally a video of me in here trying to figure out how a washer works. There's a video of me here going to my first NBA game. I'm just excited to watch those videos together with you guys. Maybe there's some insight I could share now about those experiences and see just how the experience has changed over time. So guys, let me know in the comment section below what do you guys think about this new series. So here we are guys at the end of this video. Please give this video a thumbs up or subscribe to the channel. This is like a new video you found out. I literally have like a hundred videos videos starting from when I was back home in Mumbai even to the actual airplane experience and the first day when I moved to Dallas from Mumbai and so on so definitely give those videos a look anyways I can't wait and I'll see you guys in the next video